All right, uh, hey guys, uh, another episode of Math Time for you. I know you've probably been waiting all week for this. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are we doing? Well, we're doing FP2, uh, AQA, Jan 06, question 7, uh, Kosh and Shine, your hyperbolic trigonometric functions. And this is one of those questions where you look at it and you, just, you can tell it's going to be fun straight away with all those exponentials flying all over the place. So let's just get get stuck right into it. Did I say it? I think I needed to. Seven, question seven, Jano six, AQA, FP2. It's everything you need. Get that out in front of you. And let's let's do this. Seven A I. Okay, let's find out using the exponential definitions that they give you. Let's find out what 2 shine theta cosh theta is equal to. Okay, so shine theta is a half e to the x minus e to the minus x theta, with thetas in, obviously. Uh, always used to thought it was weird that the sine would have the minus and the cos would have the plus. Usually you expect the sine to have the plus, so just remember that. Maybe no one else thinks it's weird, I don't know. Uh, okay, so the half of the shine theta will cancel out with the 2, so I'm not going to write that. So we've got e to the theta minus e to the minus theta multiplied by the half from the cos theta, e to the theta plus e to the minus theta. Cool. And then this is a standard trick then when you multiply e to the theta times e to the minus theta, you get 1 because you add the indices and that gives you e to the power of 0 and e to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Really useful trick that is uh, sometimes comes up lots of places like differentiation and things like that. If you've got e to the 2 theta and you can't quite see what you're doing with it, multiply and think by e to the minus theta, sometimes that works. Cool, okay. So let's uh, multiply the brackets and we've got a half e to the theta times e to the theta is e to the 2 theta. Like I said, these give you 1, these two would give you minus 1, and e to the minus theta times e to the minus theta gives you minus e to the minus 2 theta. So those cancel out, and that gives you a half e to the 2 theta minus e to the minus 2 theta. This shouldn't be a minus, should it? Yes! No! Yes! Yeah? No? No! No. No? Yes! Yeah, because it's shine. Because it's shine 2 theta. And shine is the one with the minus. Cool. Okay, we've got there in the end. <laughs> uh, nice one. Okay, and that's what, uh, that's what they wanted as well. Right. Oh, I just remembered as well. This question is going to be really interesting. Because it's going to pick up on a technique that I told you about before where when you're doing a show that question, if you can't quite get to the end, well, start at the end and work your way back. And we'll see that in a bit anyway. That's going to be really fun. Right. Uh, cos squared theta plus shine squared theta. Cool. So when we do the half squared, we get a quarter. So I'll write that out. And then e to the theta plus e to the minus theta squared plus a quarter e to the theta minus e to the minus theta squared. So we can factorise out the quarter and then square the rest. So e to the theta squared is e to the 2 theta. The product of these two is 1. Try Twice the product is 2, so plus 2, and then plus e to the minus 2 theta. Here we've got another e to the 2 theta. Now the product is minus 1, so twice the product is minus 2, minus e to the minus 2 theta. So the plus 2 cancels out with the minus 2, and then we've got two lots of e to the 2 theta, so a quarter times 2e to the 2 theta. And then, mm. <laughs> that's a plus, obviously, because, uh, yeah, 
minus squared is a plus, obviously. So that's plus 2e to the minus 2 theta. And now the 2 can come outside to multiply by the quarter to give you a half. So that's a half e to the 2 theta plus e to the minus 2 theta. And that is equal to the answer of the question, which is, <laughs> which is cosh 2 theta. I knew that. Cosh 2 theta. Because cosh is the one with plus and we've got 2 theta. Lovely. And all right, this is a question that I'm talking about. Okay. So, I'll write out what we're trying to show at the top. I'm definitely going to run out of space on the board here. So I don't know how I'm going to do this, but let's see. Right, x is cosh cubed. y is shine cubed. Yeah, probably. Yep, yeah, shine cubed. And we want to show that dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared is, have I left myself enough space? Uh, maybe. 9 quarters shine squared 2 theta, yep. Cosh 2 theta. Right, so that's everything we want at the top there. Probably should have started further out to the left, but that's always the way, isn't it? That's always the way. What I like watching <laughs> this is so weird. What I like watching is people protesting. If you look at their signs, it's always the same. They always start in the middle, and then they have to squeeze in the rest of the letters in their protest signs. It's a little bit of fun you can have at a protest. <laughs> okay, that was that was a bit of a weird one, wasn't it? Right. Uh, Let's actually do this question. dx d theta, let's start there. So this is the chain rule, derivative of the outside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So derivative of the outside function, we bring the three down and reduce the power, so cosh squared theta, and then multiplied by the derivative of the inside, the derivative of cosh is shine. Those are easy to remember. And dy d theta, very similarly then, is free shine squared theta. And again, the derivative of shine is cosh. Don't have to mess about with plus or minuses in hyperbolic land. Great. Uh, next, we need to square both of those. Let's do that. dx d theta squared is 9 cosh to the 4 theta shine squared theta. And dy d theta squared is equal to 9 shine to the 4 theta times cosh squared theta. Cool, nice and easy so far. Let's add them together now. So this plus this is equal to, well, we can factorize the 9 out. Do I want to do that first? No, no, no. I'm going to write them both out and then we'll see what we can factorise. So we've got, oh, there's no point in doing that though, is it really? They're already written now. Right, so we're going to add this to this. Let's see what's common to both. So 9 is in both, so we can factorise 9 out. And then we've got shine squared in both and also cosh squared in both. So we can factorise out 9 shine squared cosh squared. So 9 shine squared theta, cosh squared theta, and then what have we got left? Uh, so we've got left cosh squared theta from this one, and then shine squared theta from this one. Cool. Right, okay. And I think I've done everything that's obvious so far. Nice and simple, really. Di differentiation using the chain rule and together factorising out something. Oh yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about myself at this point, you know. Right, but I stopped. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, 
God, I've got no idea what to do next. I've got absolutely no idea. I'm thinking this might be something, and it is something actually, that's Kosh two feet up, but that might not jump out at you. Damn it, what am I going to do next? How am I going to get that to this answer here, nine over four? Well, I've got the nine, but I haven't got the over four. What the hell am I going to do? These have got two feeters in it, so I'm going to have to do something with a double angle formula. But where am I going to start? I've got no idea. I've got no idea. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get stressed out. I'm not going to panic. Uh, I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to stay chill. What I'm going to do is go, oh, forget it. You know what, I'm going to stop here. Let's go to the answer and let's see if we can get the answer to what this is. Because if we can bridge that gap from the answer to this, then we just replay those instructions backwards to get from this to the answer. I hope that made sense. At least it did in my head. Uh, right, let's see if I can use a different coloured pen. Is that showing up? Yeah, good enough. Yeah, okay. Right, so starting at the answer now. Nine quarters, shine squared two theta, cos two theta. Well, let's write out the shine squared two theta, shine two theta times shine two theta, and we'll expand that out and see what we get. So the answer now is nine quarters, and you would do this, uh, you could draw a line under this, or you could do it on a separate page, but make sure it's separate, make sure it's not carrying on. So line, or like I said, on a separate page. Because uh, you, you will have to write this out uh, eventually in the reverse order. So it would it'd take a little bit of time, maybe two, three minutes of extra work, but that's fine if you can't figure out what you're gonna do. Much better spending three minutes just writing out stuff again in reverse than not getting these six marks at all, or there's probably three or four marks left by this point anyway. Okay, so shine two feet up times shine two theta, times cosh two theta. And I know, uh, like I said before, the double angle formulas are in the book. Uh, you can change them to hyperbolic nice and easy. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's write that out. What have we got here? So we've got nine quarters times shine two theta is two shine theta, co or cosh theta shine theta. Doesn't matter which way you want to write. So we've got that twice, got another two cosh theta sine theta. And the cosh double angle formula gives us cosh squared theta plus shine squared theta. Cool, and now I think we can see it, or I can see it now, you might not be able to see it, but uh, we're very, very close now because two times by the two gives us four, and that will cancel out with the four here, giving us nine, which is what we wanted, so let's do that. So we've got nine. Cos theta times cos theta is cos squared theta. Shine theta times shine theta is shine squared theta. And then we've got this bracket here, which is cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. And have a look at that. We've bridged the gap. This is what we had written here. So all we need to do now, literally, is go back to this place on your page and write this line underneath it, and then write that line underneath it, and then you have the answer. So that's probably a minute extra work, and a really, really nice way to get the actual proof that you wanted. And I'm not, you know, I wasn't lying. When I got here, I literally did not know what to do. Like I said, I thought this might be some something, but that led me to a dead end, right in cost street feet today. Uh, so yeah, really good technique. Just jump to the answer, see what you can do with the answer. It's quite obvious to expand shine two feet, and I'll look at that, we've bridged the gap. Fantastic. So that's a really nice technique there, and uh, yeah, I'm really glad I got to show you that, and because it was, uh, yeah, it was nice. Cool. So another six marks, making this an 18 mark question in total, for integrating that now. 
So integrating the arc length, which is what you just found, square rooted. So now, okay, we're going to integrate between 1 and 0. The square root of 9 over 4. Oh, this pen's running out. I need to steal another one from work. I need to buy another pen from the shop. 9 over 4, shine squared 2 theta. times cos 2 theta, d theta, cool. So straight away, 9 over 4 can be square rooted to give us 3 over 2, I'm going to bring it on the outside of my integral, and shine squared 2 theta, well that's easy to square it. So 3 over 2 times the integral between 1 and 0 of shine 2 theta times root of cos 2 theta, d theta. Now, a couple of episodes ago, I told you to create a booklet of standard integrals that come up over and over again. Well, there's four of them, really, that repeat over and over again. If you've done that, hopefully you'll recognise this as one of the patterns, where you've got something to a power, and then you've got the derivative of that, or something very close to the derivative of that, on the outside. So how do we do this? we think about reverse differentiation. We write down a function that looks like that, see what it differentiates to, and then see how we need to adjust it to get to the what's actually inside of our integral. So, let y let y equal cos 2 theta to the half, which is root of cos 2 theta. I'm going to differentiate that, see how close to this I get, and then see what I need to adjust. So dy d theta. So the half would come down, and I'd reduce the power to minus a half, so already I've gone wrong. If I reduce the power by 1, I need the power to be 3 over 2 here. And actually, maybe I shouldn't have brought that 3 over 2 outside the integral, but it doesn't matter. We can handle that in a bit. So the 3 over 2 comes down. We reduce the power by 1, so cos 2 theta to the half, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which would be 2 shine 2 theta. So this 2 is going to cancel out with this 2. And then we can see we're very close to what we have now in the inside of the integral. We just have three lots of it. So to counter adjust for that, let's make y over 3. Let's times it by a third. And that means then that if this differentiates to this, then this integrates to that, and we have our integration done. Cool. So So this 3 over 2 will cancel out with the third, that will just give us a half. And then just evaluate this between 1 and 0. Does it say giving your answer exactly? Oh no, it tells you It tells you what your answer needs to be. And that's really quick to get there now because cos of 0 is 1. So you can basically write down the answer and that's your 6 marks. So. That whole six marks basically came down to spotting that integration was one of those patterns that come up over and over again. And like I said, to help you with that, create a booklet of your standard integrations. So as soon as you see that, it jumps out at you. Ah, oh, you know, oh, we've got something in a bracket to a power, and then next to that bracket, we've got the derivative of it. Ah, oh, that should jump out at you. It should jump off the page as a standard integral as should uh, the derivative of the bottom of the fractions on the top, or where you've got the square root of the bottom is derivatives on the top. That's three, and I'm sure there's one more as well. So a booklet of four standard integrals. Make sure you have that uh, created. Okay, that's all from me this week. Two episodes, uh, double the fun. I've lost my pen lids, so I'm definitely gonna have to nick one 
buy one from a proper shop. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. That's great, you know. Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting close to the exams now, so please, please, uh, email me some questions. Post them on YouTube. Message me. Sensible maths questions, please. Not like Sally from uh, Bear on Tweed. Uh, proper questions, and I'll definitely get around to them. I'll definitely answer them. I'll make as many videos as I can. One month left. Well, no, two months to the exam, but I'm uh, I go on holiday June the thirteenth, so uh, I won't be able to make videos after that. Cool. Okay. Good luck, guys. Keep revising. Keep going for it now. Now's the time. Really, really, you know, whip it out now. Get cracking with the revision. Because I tell you what, you've got, I think, what's going to be the longest summer holiday of your life coming up as well. Because it's that space between going to uni, finishing your exams kind of early, and then going to uni. Huge summer. Enjoy it. It's going to be all the better if you're not worried about your mark because you know you put as much effort into your revision as possible. So put in the work now with your revision and that means you just go mental over the summer, no consequences, you know you're happy because you put the work in uh, May and June, which is what you're going to do. Good luck guys.